Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Craft of the Draft podcast, and we're back for our second episode. And if you've seen episode one, you know what to expect. We're looking through the top five players from each big country club, as usual. I'm your co-host, Nathan Seppi, in a nice studio, as usual, but from Radio Karim, so we appreciate their support and letting us use this really nice facility. Joined by my co-host, John T. Ralph-Smith. John T. A lot going on in the country region and it's good to see them thriving as usual. Good to see them thriving as usual and yeah, February, footy's starting to heat up, pracky matches are starting to get played so it's a really exciting time of year. Who's going to be the players that are going to really announce themselves early in the season? Who are going to be the players from the AFL Academy that are going to take the next step and who are going to be the Vic Country Summer Training Hub players that we're going to see have a really strong preseason and launch strongly into the year. We'll go through each club and we'll go through in alphabetical order so if you want to skip to your club that gives you a little bit of an indication of where they might be obviously starting with the Bendigo Pioneers. Yeah well we'll start with Job Shanahan probably at the top of the list for the Pios and we saw right at the end of last year in that under 17s game his him in action for New South Wales ACT he's so powerful and that overhead ability it's going to take him quite far and even on grand final day AFL grand final day last year we know what he's capable of it's it's really a matter of just building on that and he'll only get better you assume so what do you, where do you think he's going to take the most opportunities this year in his football? And it's a great question. Where is he going to take the most opportunities? Because he can play across all three lines, it sounds like. We know he can play in the forward line. We know he can play in defence as well. And we're hearing that he might get some midfield time as well. And he's such a great size to be a midfielder. He's that 193, 194 centimetre type of player. He kicks the ball so sweetly. I think that's something that's underrated about him. He's obviously got those really strong hands overhead. And he he's shown that consistently he shows it when he's leading up at the ball carrier playing in the forward line like you said we saw it with that best on ground game playing for new south wales act rams and when he's playing in the back line as well he's so damaging i think it'd be a shame if he is stuck in the back line not not necessarily because he can't play that position well but just purely from an x-factor point of view he offers so much up forward so really looking forward to what we see from him he's also really good below his knees and and that's something that for someone his size can sort of separate him and be a real point of difference. So he's one to, to keep a close eye on. And, and Archer Day Wicks, another one who I know you've been really big on and, and really enjoyed watching. He's had to overcome a little bit of adversity across the last 12 to 18 months, missing the Vic, Vic Country under-16 squad. was probably a, a little bit of a dagger blow. He had glandular fever. He had to overcome and miss the AFL Academy camp through illness the end of last season as well but certainly he has got a ripping attitude and we know that all the ingredients are there for him to shine in 2024 it's just a matter of him putting it all together well he blew me away when it was the Vic Metro country trials last year where he kicked a nice little dribble from the pocket that got everyone up but he's one that is just like he's alive he's got creativity he's got that pounce on the ball and he's dangerous and I think especially on grand final, AFL grand final day last year, we saw that capability. He knows how to get his hands on the footy. He's just going to make it count. And once he does have that impact, he really does pack a punch. So I'm very eager to see where his football takes him because he has so much potential. And I think there's a lot of scope with his game as well. So... One I'm very, very big on. Played some senior footy for Sandhurst as well, which is going to hold him in good stead. And and a left footer always provides that little bit of point of difference when you do watch those sort of players. And then I guess the third of the big three from Bendigo is Toby Trevalia. Probably very unlucky not to get a game for Vic Country last year. We know that Vic Country didn't afford as many opportunities to the bottom ages as what Vic Metro did. But he's put on some size over the off-season, pre-season. That's very obvious when you sort of stand next to him. Um, Obviously plays his best footy as that sort of winger half back and he's got the excellent vision he's quite courageous overhead for someone of his size as well so he's someone who has got a body of work behind him already it's probably just a matter of building on that and string together another consistent season of footy the natural next step will be for him to play some really good footy during the national championships in 2024 obviously he'll want to start the season off for bendigo strongly first yeah, he will and he's a a real pure half back run and carry gets a lot of meters gained he probably up there I'd say if they had that statistic in the talent league he'd definitely be up there but he punches above his weight as well so he's not afraid to take on those bigger opponents and he does beat them a lot so really keen to see where his football takes him and he was dominating at in his 17s year last year James Barrett is one I want to touch on because we know he's had a bit of an interrupted 17s year with injury and this year he'll be looking to take that much more further and he's intimidating one that you don't want to be playing on 
in the forward line. So tell me a bit more about why we should be looking out for James and, and, and what's next for him. Yeah, I think next for him is being able to get that consistent run of form together because he he did only play a couple of games in his 17s year, but you don't kick seven goals in an under-16s game for Bendigo Pioneers by accident. So clearly the talent's all there. He's used the time off the field due to a navicular injury, and it's one that keeps nagging him. Um, and it's it's one that he's struggling to sort of recover from, but we will definitely see him in action at some point in 2024. So I think he's one that, with how imposing he is, will be very hard to stop. He's used his time, like we say, off the field to improve his his size and put on a lot of size to, to bulk up. And he's, he's one who, even if he only plays sort of half a season or it takes him a little while to get back to, to his very best, I think that second half of the season, a club will see what he's capable of is that 193, 194 centimetre forward and want to pounce on that because he has got very good skills and certainly has got a fair bit to offer. They're certainly talking him up in the Bendigo Pioneers region. Lovely to hear and hope his season does go uninterrupted. As yep. we wish for all players, Tom Evans, one to just, you know, touch on. Gutsy, got a really good defensive element, tough player for Bendigo. One that kind of interested to see his character and sort of player development throughout the year and where his role takes him. Any interest in him? Yeah, yeah. I think he's got an excellent understanding of the game, doesn't he? He only played the seven games last year, so he, he had a little bit of an injury interrupted journey as well. But what's interesting about him and the reason I am... I, um, keen to see what becomes of him. He averaged more disposals in his game throughout 2023 than any other Bendigo Pioneers player. Obviously, they had Harley Reid and a lot of hype around him. We know he's not the 30-possession player. He's not that type of player. He's more of an impact player. But I don't think you, by accident, average sort of 18, 19 possessions in your under-17s years. So he's one I'm really looking forward to seeing. And he finished the season really well as well. Kicked four goals in the wildcard game, lost to the Geelong Falcons. And I think that was a real glimpse into what he can produce this season once he was able to get a few games back to back together awesome to hear and he's one yeah building into 2024 really nicely Archie what the last one to touch on for these pies and he's a big figure pretty intimidating and had a very good start to his 2024 preseason yeah yeah he's one that they've sort of talked about is really impressed at the at the pioneers in preseason he reads the game really well he's got a really efficient kick and and he's really hard at it he comes across from Oakley and he'll play in the APS competitions so he's he's an interesting sort of I guess examination for for the Bendigo Pioneers to look at because he, he won't train with them a whole lot. He's obviously going to be interrupted with school footy, but when he does come back to the Pioneers, I think he's one that could be really important through that midfield so that the likes of Job Shanahan up forward when he does play up forward and James Barrett when he's there do get good delivery because he he's a real accumulator, he's a hunter, and, and he kicks it well as well. Moving on to Dandy non stinrays Start with Noah Mraz, uh, key position. He can provide a lot of contests, one that built into the end of 2023 really nicely and got a lot of game time last year as well. What more can we expect from Noah to advance his game? Yeah, I think Noah's one who obviously made Vic Country as a 17-year-old and there weren't many players that did do that as we've already touched on. He looks most settled in defence, I think. He's a really athletic sort of player. So he's one who'll look to continue to use his mobility as a point of difference. He's still raw, but he's got that really good skill set and I know the Stingrays are really high on what he's going to produce and I guess you can see why when you do watch him because at his size and we know this is a draft class that doesn't have a whole lot of height with about it there's you know it's very midfield dominant so having someone with his height is a is a real point of difference and yeah looking forward to seeing what he's able to produce not just down back but also if he's swung forward that versatility is going to be really important for him to show different strings to his bow and and he has already shown he can play in different positions harvey laneford would talk about his stoppage craft and he's probably one that had a probably one of the more dominant seasons for Dandenong on last yep. year. Just real good, clean hands and knows how to impact the contest really well. Where's his game looking to advance this year? He's 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 built really nicely. I think his his skill set does really help his game. Like you said, he's an ex- excellent contested player, but he's also really good when he gets the ball on the outside. I think you can really trust him. If he's kicking to you inside 50, you know he's going to hit you on the lead. So he's someone who's got that really good balance and you'd look forward to seeing. He he could be, you know, one of those leaders for Dandenong. I think he, he captained a game last year where the leaders were out due to national championships uh, commitments. So he's one who will be really important in that midfield. And yeah, he's not afraid to win the hardball. 
Probably the last one of the, the big three for Dandin on this year is, is Cooper Hines. And he's one, again, got a lot of game time last year. He's got a big frame. He's not afraid yep. in the contest. His tackling pressure is one that sort of stands out for me and, and one you know that will commit every time he's around the ball and can hit the scoreboard as well. So there's a bit about Cooper to like. I think the biggest thing for me is he does hit the scoreboard, like you said. He's a midfielder forward, but even when he is running through the midfield, he's able to hit the scoreboard when his team really needs it. His his dad, John, played some VFL footy for Frankston, so he does have a little bit of that understanding of what it takes and the importance of that work ethic, etc. So he's someone who has that strong build and, yeah, will be a really important ingredient in that midfield. But also, when he goes forward, I think he'll be really hard to match up on. We'll, li- we'll list a few more for Dandy Nod, and, and they really do fit into our under-the-radar category this year with, with the list they have. I'll, I'll let you kind of list through a few of them. Alwood Peckett will start with. Yep. Yeah, Alwood Peckett, so he's one who has trained with St Kilda over the summer. He's a, he's a St Kilda father-son prospect, his dad, playing more than 100 games for the club and has really impressed, I think, Dandy Nong in pre-season with the way he's been training. He's also one who who will be an important ingredient down back. We've already talked about that with Noah Moraz, but I think his athleticism as well will hold him in really good stead. Alwood Peckett. You've also got Harry Doughton, a, a kid from Mount Eliza who I don't think we should sleep on. He's someone who got that under-17s trial match last year playing for Vic Country, which was a real significant mark of how far he has come coming into the Stingrays program. He probably was seen as maybe a, a fringe player, is probably a little bit harsh, but he's one who we, was probably more of a wait-and-see player. But, yeah, it, it's been a really steep rise from the Mount Eliza under-17s to the Dandenong Stingrays where not only was he able to hit the scoreboard on a consistent basis and show his really good skill execution, but he does have that real pressure inside 50 that's a, a point of difference, I think. So he's one who's off ball work is excellent and it's it's not just his skills for him it's also what he does when he doesn't have the ball and that's something that can take a little bit to to get used to particularly at talent league level when you do want the ball in your hands all the time you do want to show what you can do if you to list off a couple more charlie Rowe played some really good footy for halebury he's one that can be played in the back line or the forward line so interested to see if he's able to take another step with his footy he's gotten a bit stronger and corin gilliam's flashy and and shown a little bit of excitement so he's he's another one. But, yeah, probably those last three or four probably in that wait and see category. Obviously, they've got Mraz, Hines and Langford who are all already showing that they do have a fair bit about them being in the Vic Country Summer Training Hub. 100%. Jalon Falcons up next and, and I'll kick it off with Xavier Iversich who is probably my favourite bottom major to watch along with one other we'll touch on. But he's got great offensive flair, someone who just knows how to use his yep. legs really well and he has that natural running power he's got good polish as well and he's an efficient ball user there's actually not a lot to his game that he has to improve on as of yet in terms of he really used his 17s year to his advantage and really took every opportunity and I think especially the players he was around last year like Angus Hasty who had those similar traits in the on the half back line I, I think he's really got a great foundation to build into 2024. It's amazing how silky he is, yeah, it's a, and it's amazing that he was able to translate what's clearly a natural trait for him into talent league footy as a bottom major. It can be intimidating coming in. He also had an excellent APS season and he's really efficient by foot as well. So looking forward to seeing him take that next step. Zach McInnes, another one who showed quite a bit for Geelong. has been a little bit of injury, though, that sort of interrupted him. So hopefully he gets a clear run at it. Obviously, the ankle sort of truncated his 2023, but a key forward and a key forward that's got a big frame and will be hard to stop in 2024 if he does reach his best. Well, I was pretty adamant, especially the first four weeks of last year. He would have been up there with probably the top 10, 15 players in those first four weeks in the Talent League last year. He's got great power his legs can drive him out and every lead he makes he takes a mark there and he's also very efficient he knows how to hit the scoreboard it's just general contested capability that he knows so well that I think without injury last year there was every chance he could have pushed for a big country team at that age so I'm very excited to see where his football takes him this year still a lot of polish to 
to be done with his game, but there's a lot to like there. Fitness with, uh, too, probably building yeah. that fitness space so he can empty out a little bit more as well. But yeah, I, I certainly think there's a lot of upside with him. Kobe George, another one. Last year was his first year in the system as a defender, so a big rise for him. And he he looks really comfortable in that native half back position where he's played a lot of his junior footy. He did get thrown about a bit positionally, but where he looked most comfortable was when he did get that string of games together off the half back line and then got that under 17s trial. Again, similar to what we talked about with Harry Downton, a real real nod to how far he has come. He's, he's an unassuming character and he's, he's balanced both ways, but he's able to shut down and he's really calm and composed. River Stevens, one I want to touch on, father son this year, great one on one player. Small forward, he just protects his space really well. He's clean, got pace and, and great sideways movement as well. Just in that forward 50, knows how to run his opponent around. So very excited. Play some good football at the back end of 2023. Yeah, one for North Melbourne fans to get excited about. The son of Anthony Stevens and that good football at the back end of 2023 did earn him that under-17s trial as well. And Josh Sanders, he's got a high-level athletics background. So that's something that he'll look to, I guess show on the footy field because we know how important athleticism and power is in the modern game so he can play in a couple of positions I think you'll see him a little bit off half back might run through the midfield as well he's solidly built and you you know it is that when you look at him he has played some senior footy and he would be able to stand up to the the brutish nature of that Uh, but it's his explosiveness that he'll really want to show and prove that he's not sort of a a one pace midfielder because he's certainly got the different gears to go through with that athletics background he's got the spring as well so He's someone who is one just to keep an eye on with that athleticism. And Noah Tulio is one that I know you've watched. Um, So he's a sort of smaller player and he's an excellent runner as well and played in Newton and Chilwell's senior grand final last year and got best on ground. So if you look at him and know how small he is, he'd be less than 170 centimetres, then you know how big an effort it is for him to play such good senior footy. Uh, Certainly he's one that impressed in his talent league opportunities last year. 100%. He took every opportunity he had. He has great pressure. He's one that doesn't shy away from the contest and knows how to hunt the footy really, really well. So... Pretty excited to see where his footy takes him. And two other names, I think, just list off here and worth mentioning. Lockie Jakes. And it is Jakes. We did we did ask him this question. Yes. Now, J-A-C-Q-U-E-S. Is Jacques, but there's That's no C. Thought. There's no C there's, in the name. There's no C there. There's no yep. C there. So it's it's Jakes. So we'll run with that this year. And Jack Henderson. We're with yep. Lockie, Silky, great aerial ability. So and, and Jack, we're looking to see where he takes his midfield time this year. We'll move on now. To the Gippsland Power, and, and I'll let you kick this off with Xavier Lindsay, who we've seen quite a good bit of, and natural footballer generally, and great vision. Loved his AFL Grand Final day, absolutely loved it. Just his kicking in general, he just yep. knew where to get that ball every time, and really good footy IQ. Yeah, he's a smooth mover. I think we've talked about him quite a lot. I've been high on him for 12 months now, if not more. He was obviously really really important in that under-16s Vic Country side. He, he made a name for himself as that wing half back, but he, he stood up to the pressure of going into the midfield last year, not only stood up to it, but actually rose to the responsibility and showed his contested craft. So I think that second half of last season was outstanding, obviously played a really good game in that under-17s Vic Country trial um, and has that really good understanding of the game as well. He runs and runs. His ball use is spectacular. So I think he's one that can really set up the game for Gippsland wherever he plays. He's got that versatility to him now. So he's he's one who is a big watch for 2024. I think he could take a few people by surprise. Not that he hasn't already made a name for himself, but I think he could take that next step again with that midfield exposure he has already got. Ricky Mentha, the other one in the AFL Academy from the Gippsland Power, I know he's one that you're very high on. He's a he's a live wire small forward. He, he'll play for the Northern Territory in the first month. Obviously, being from the Northern Territory, his family moved down to, or he's, he moved down with his dad to Druin last year, and he'll then link up with Gippsland for the rest of the season. But yeah, I know you're you're really excited about what he offers with that electricity in the forward line. I'd argue that he has the most electricity in this year's small forwards crop, and I know you look at Isaac Kako as your other as your other small forward option, but I think they're both terrific. But Ricky just has natural goal sense out of. Any kind of forward 50 stoppage, he knows where to run and get the footy. First hands on it yep. when it's received down and just knows how to find the goals. And he knows how to kick them. And I'll take you again back to AFL Grand Final Day. First shot 
35 metres out, deep in the pocket, he nails it. Absolutely nails it. This is just a kid who knows how to find the goals and just knows how to run his opponent around and win the footy relentlessly. So I'm very big on him and I think he's got scope as well. He's got pace. You could put him further up the ground and he'd make a really good impact. So he'd, 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 yeah, he'd have to be up there as my top small forward, but, you know, Isaac Kako a close second in that race. Yeah, I'd still put Isaac Kako ahead of him just because I think he's a little bit more developed. I think I think the, there's a little bit more rawness to Ricky Mentha still, and I think Isaac Kako is one who hasn't had to use the summer to really develop that small forward craft. It, it's, it's, I guess, taking that next step with that defensive ability, and that's something you'll probably see shine through in his game a little bit more in 2024, and he'll get some midfield minutes as well. Ricky Mentha's more skinnily built than Isaac Kako. So Isaac Kako, like we say, might go into some centre bounce or might get some centre bounce attendances, whereas Ricky meant that you're probably more restricted having to put him on a wing just with how skinnily he is built. But certainly he's one to get excited about. And I think he has already played a game on the wing for Gippsland from memory. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he does get that opportunity again. And then there's some others from Gippsland as well to to list off. So Max Donahue was really consistent throughout 2023. He'll get a Vic Country trial at least, I would think, if he's able to continue that form on 15 games, averaging 16 touches. Max Stobie's one who provides drive and has got a little bit of a turn of speed. I think he plays his best footy off halfback. And Julian Callahan in a similar vein. He's sort of an outside player. He's got a bit of athleticism. He's played 12 games. So Gippsland have got a few there below those two, you know, top, top players who will all challenge to take the next step with their footy in 2024. Move to the GWV Rebels, and this is a team last year that with that bottom age talent could have made the grand final. They went out, uh, I think, two weeks before, but had yeah. a terrific season, a lot of their bottom ages. And you start from the top with Sam Lawler, who just played terrifically in 2023. And the opportunities he had it at a, as a bottom ager in that big countryside, he took them, especially in WA. It was terrific. Yep. He's just a real pure power mid, and he could be up there with one of the best power mids in the competition this year. Just has real composure with the ball in hand. His ball skills are really good. Just knows how to find a clean handball out of congestion, and the ball moves forward really well and has the potential to play as a deep forward option this year. So kind of like Dustin Martin type role, yep. dare I say. So he's really got that versatility and excited, really excited to see where his football yep. takes him. Can I can I make a statement about Sammy Lawler? And I know you've watched a bit more about him of him than on what I have, but of players that are either in the AFL Academy, the Vic Country Hub, or the Vic Metro Hub, I think he's the cleanest and most polished player below his knees in in the crops. So I think that's that's a real point of difference. I think that's something that is going to really separate him. It buys him that little bit of extra time as well. But certainly they bat a lot deeper than just Sam Lawler. Yeah. They they've probably got the the strongest team on paper of all the Vic Country sides, I would argue. John T. Fall is one who's really good as a as a hit up forward and got good hands. Hundred percent. He was he, he doesn't usually drop his marks and he knows how to take them in all different weird ways, which is something I learned pretty quickly last year, but yeah, he's got he's very powerful, knows how to use his legs well. I would say he plays above his size. He, even though he's grown to 196, he was kind of at that 191, 192 height last year, but he knows how to get his hands up and kind of beat those taller opponents. I guess this year it's working on his technical side of the game, but there's a lot to love there with Jonty. Probably, probably one of the better tall forwards and and half tall half power forward this year so yeah exciting with John T. Finished the season really strongly as well I think last season had a really good last month of the year then you've also got Ollie Hannaford who's physical and quick and versatile which are all ingredients that bode well if you want to get drafted. Well the the one thing with Ollie that stood out last year and and there were a few games he took on the role of Harley Reid whenever they played Bendigo and did a really good job on him as well so that was a big task that he took on in his bottom age year but yeah he can take on all kind of roles as well he'll play some time in the forward line he knows how to play that half back role and that midfield role he knows well so a lot of versatility there with him he's got real good toughness to his game yep general speed ability so high energy player high impact would love to see where his footy takes him but he's one that can do so many different roles on the footy field that is i reckon definitely undervalued at this point in time but that the reality will set him very quickly that he's probably one of the best at doing every single role on the football field in a good way so very excited. And I think that's true in terms of undervalued. Oh, I, I think that's true in terms of 
um, he's under, uh, you know, that hype is real inside the four walls of GWV, but yeah. certainly some people outside of those four walls are also starting to talk about him because of what he was able to produce in 2023. Reese Unwin is one who will be really important inside 50. We know they had Lockie Charleston last year, the GWV Rebels, as that really crafty crumbing forward. Reese Unwin, not necessarily exactly the same player, but certainly the same sort of goal sense and craft inside 50. And yeah, will be as impactful on the scoreboard, I would assume, as Lockie. Well, we weren't, Well, we learnt with Lockie that it only takes a few games to really show how impactful you can be and that can be enough to get you drafted sometimes. But he's explosive. He knows how to lead well. But I think he's different to Lockie in the sense that Lockie played a bit more midfield time, but Reese just generally pushes up in his game and he knows how to impact the contest a bit further up the ground and outside of outside of their 50. So I think that probably the next step with his game, because we know he'll impact the scoreboard, he knows how to find the foot inside 50, just building that defensive side a bit more and knowing how to shut down inside 50 yes. because when it's not landing his way, he struggles a little bit to get the football back in his hands and you know get things back on his terms. So once he builds that defensive side, there's a lot to love with him. And yeah, you do see the very similar comparisons to Lockie Charleston in the way they play. And just just on Lockie Charleston, we'll talk about Harry Charleston, his his brother, and one that yeah has certainly captured a little bit of attention as well in Rebels in the Rebels region. Different different players, one hundred percent. Harry has a lot more height um, than Lockie, and, and a really nice kick off half back. Has the endurance, but this this year we'll see a lot of him in the midfield. So there's a good good bit of scope with him. So different players. Don't expect what you had with Lockie with Harry. Two different players. But yeah, love to see what Harry brings this year. So there's a lot to learn with his football still. And Flynn Penry, who we've we've listed off sixth, I think, in this list of players. That's not to say he's the sixth best rebel. He's obviously in that Vic Country squad and competing with Zach Harding probably for that number one ruck mantle when they do play their first game later this season. We know how important Hyde is in this draft class. And I know I keep saying it, but it's because the the trend speaking to people in the industry is that any height you know people want to have a really good look at because it is so sort of midfield dominant but yeah he's one who did get a fair bit of exposure last year averaged 17 hit outs and 10 disposals per game yeah well he's strong and mobile and and he knows how to use his frame pretty well i guess in terms of using that frame well it still is executing those roles with his height more and that's just dominating a few more of those contests to get the ball working his way still so still a lot to be developed with him i think there's, you know, the potentially turns into that kind of Lockie Smith type role that we, you know, yeah, you, right. loved, okay. you loved watching last year who you'd argue Lockie could be put on a win and you wouldn't even question him <laughs> apart from his height that he was that good with the ball outside of just general ruck contest. Yep. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of development still to go with him as there is with a lot of rucks at this time yep. of, of the year and just generally at that age. So a lot to like with Flynn and, and he'll, his season will progress really nicely. Yeah, no, nah, absolutely. We'll move on to the Murray Bush Rangers now. And the really obvious name to touch on first here is Ollie Warburton. He's one who will juggle playing for Caulfield, you would assume playing for Vic Country, and also playing for the Murray Bush Rangers as well. He trains with the Sandringham Dragons when he is down boarding at Caulfield Grammar. He's one who has really clean hands and is is probably one who I talked about Sam, Sam Lawley. He's probably in that similar vein in that he's really good below his knees and would probably rival him in terms of Vic Country hub who's cleaner below their knees. But his contested craft is another real big uh, weapon of his. He's one who... When he's in the contest, he, he knows where to stand. He knows how to structure up, plays to structure up really well. And I think he'll he'll show his wares both at school footy level, but I expect he's going to become a really important player for Murray this season. We know he's already shown a fair bit in his bottom age year and that's going to set him up really well. So, yeah, excited to see what we get from Ollie Warburton because he's got an important role to play in the Bushies midfield. Move to the Whitlocks, the two identical twins and, yep. and in which we had the opportunity to meet both of them a couple of weeks ago and they truly are identical. Yes. And, and yep. the way we learnt them was one had a black hat, one had a white hat, yep. Jack in black. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. They, they really are that identical. We'll start, uh, we'll, start, we'll start with Jack who yeah, famously kicked that winning goal after the siren in the under-17s game last year, which head to our socials if you want to see that. That got a very good crowd reaction there. But yeah, he's... That typical tall forward, he's yeah. strong, knows how to use his arms overhead and he's built good size as well. So 
definitely built into his frame really nicely. Yeah, he is building into his frame nicely. Obviously, you know, clubs are still willing enough to take someone who's raw and, and back someone, like we say, like you said about Flynn Penry, yeah. takes someone who has got that rawness but is clearly developable. But he has put on size over the offseason. That's really obvious when you look at him. And, yeah, I think you've summed him up really well. He'll pinch it in the ruck a little bit, yeah. and I think you'll see him go down back when Matt Whitlock goes up forward. So Matt Whitlock's the defender. Jack Whitlock's probably been more seen as the forward at this stage, but they'll get thrown around because that ability to, to swing both ends is, is you know, going to hold them both in really good stead. And, and certainly they've both played all their junior footy together and, and having each other to sort of bounce off would no doubt be a, a big factor in in their rise. We'll talk about Matt Whitlock, who, yeah, out of the back line, yeah, similar traits, uh, knows how to shut down, backs himself overhead like Jack does. But I think he's also he's also a, he's also a good user of the ball. And the other thing about both of them is they move really well. Yeah. We saw that last year. Yes, they've put on size, but I still think they have the the capacity to to be really polished and have the ability to be. I guess able to able to move through traffic and set up the game really well, whether that's from the back line or or in the forward line. Both have good skill sets and. It's nice that they both play different positions, so they get good practice on each other yeah. most of the time. Move to uh, Josh Murphy, who played on AFL Grand Final Day and got a bit of opportunity towards the end of that game. Strong power forward, so a lot of development left in his game, but he's definitely got the frame and the size to execute that role really well. Yeah, he does. He does indeed. And Braden George was a former uh, Murray Bush Ranger, and he's one who he's been compared to in that sort of region of the world. He... He's sort of 192, 193 centimetres, can play forward, but will also go through the midfield at different stages this year. And I think it's his ability to get separation on the lead. So he's got that little bit of speed and, and explosiveness as well, which is going to hold him in really good steady. He comes up at the ball carrier well, presents well, and then is able to then execute well in terms of taking a really strong mark. So his tricks are really good. We'll move to Zach Harding. Yeah. Uh, he Again, like you said, he'll be fighting for that primary ruck role at Vic country level yep. with Flynn Penry. What, well, what's, what separates those two? What are the differences and, and, and what what is it with Zach Harding that will get him that push to that number one role? Yeah, well, I think he's a really physical ruck. So you talked about Flynn Penry as being that, I guess, modern ruck in terms of he's able to get involved around the ground. He's able to be really good with his possession he's able to he's able to move he's able to be important in terms of taking a, a mark down the line and and then actually being able to see where where to move it to and have that footy IQ as well I think Zach Harding's more the player who's going to really dominate you and bruise you in the ruck contests uh, he's played some really high end senior footy up there we know how well regarded that league is in Victoria and he's he's played that pretty consistently when he hasn't been playing for Murray and yeah had some good form behind him he's the son of former AFL player Dean who's now involved in coaching up in the Murray Bush Rangers region so I think for him it's just about developing that that side of his game in terms of having that athleticism. He is a little bit bigger than Flynn, so he has grown into his frame a little bit more, which is why he is able to compete in senior footy, whereas he he doesn't necessarily have the same level of athleticism. It's not to say he doesn't. He's actually reasonably okay for, for his size, but probably becoming that player who can be involved around the ground and you trust that if he had the ball, he's going to hit you and, and make the right decision is the, is the next step in his game. A few more to list off, although they, Murray have a good list this year. They actually, yeah, they're yeah, actually it's good okay. to see. Yeah. They've got a few, uh, like it's it's got some depth. So yep. exciting to see where their football takes us. But one that you loved watching last year, and you brought up pretty early in the season, I think it was when they played uh, Geelong at Avalon, Darby Wilson. Uh, yep. I'd love you to expand on his game because he's one that, yeah, really took into his 17th year and, and built some nice uh, a nice football resume, especially leading up to this time of year. He's got genuine speed, Darcy Wilson, and he's able to shut down. So he's really competitive and he, he loves being one-on-one and he's really hard to beat one-on-one. So I remember that game, obviously, out at Avalon. That was where he put his name on the map, beating Tom and Astasopoulos and, and keeping him really quiet. And that pretty much changed the course. I know he got drafted. He's now at Port Adelaide, Tom Anastasopoulos. But that first month of Tom Anastasopoulos' season, outstanding. And then after playing on Derby Wilson, he, he probably didn't have the same level of consistency or scoreboard impact. I'm not saying Darby Wilson, you know, changed the course of his season, but certainly he played a really good game on him and had that selfless role. He also played on Seb Amoroso, a very different sort of forward, probably a little bit bigger in terms of his frame, a little bit stronger, and he was still able to shut him down and played a half on Isaac Kako before he injured his hamstring, which sort 
sort of ruled him out of the back end of the talent league season and played really well on Isaac Kako. So three small forwards that are really well regarded. Amoroso now on a VFL list. We know Kako is one who we expect will be taken at the end of the year and is already well regarded and already shown that he can kick seven goals on a day. So he's one who has been able to shut down those sort of players, but he's he's got the ability to, I guess, expand on his game by becoming a little bit more offensive and showing a little bit more of that flair with that speed. So can he provide that drive off halfback and set the game up? Because we know he builds his game off the back of his defence. He's one that I've really enjoyed watching and he's played some senior footy for Euroa as well. Three others to list off and two that two especially we've heard good pre-season notes about. Yep. Colin Paul... Ruben Burke, Alex Swinnerton, love you to touch on and give us a bit more of a profile on those boys. Yeah, Colin Paul. So, yeah, I mean, the thing with Murray is they've got a fair bit of height and that's something that, that a lot of clubs are really struggling with. So you've got the Whitlocks, you've got Zach Harding, and then you've got Colin Paul, who's sort of 192, 193 as well. So, yeah, he's trimmed his 2K time trial time down significantly. He's put on a fair bit of size and he's one who played a bit up forward for Murray when he was in the team last year, but I think he's going to get some time in the midfield this year from everything we're hearing. He's really powerful. He's another one who played seniors for Euroa, so a local teammate of Darby Wilson's. Alex Swinnerton is one who's allies region. He's a very small forward, um, but, you know, would have probably got a lot of, you know, enjoyment from seeing someone like Nick Watson really thrive last season. He's not the same vein of player as Nick Watson just yet. Whether he builds to that level or not, that remains to be seen. But he did get a 17s trial for New South Wales ACT last year. And then you've also got, like you said, you've got uh, Will McCarthy, who is from the same junior club as Darcy Wilson and will be looking to make the wing position his own. And Ruben Burke, who's a tall defender who hasn't played a game yet, new to the program, but has impressed a lot of people. So, And, and again, some height for Murray. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they go this season because they've obviously top, top end. They're probably a little bit less established than some of their Vic Country counterparts, but then they've got a lot of players who could really push. So, And they have already confirmed their list. They confirmed their list, I think, first out of all the Vic Country teams a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah. Um, some excitement. Eager to see where they take their footy this year. And the last team of the country teams, the one team not in Victoria, obviously Tasmania. So, yeah, look, Tassie always do well, don't they? They always seem to be up the top of the table come the end of the year and they yeah. always produce really good talent. So excited to see where they take their footy. But we'll, we'll touch on one that was featured on AFL Grand Final Day yeah. was... Ollie Dean, tall yeah, rock. Yeah, so a, a raw and developing ruck. He, he averaged 12 hitouts last year, sharing the ruck duties with Max Mapley. He'll be doing that again this year. Max Mapley's returning as a 19-year-old. We will do a separate episode on the returning 19-year-olds who to watch out for at the mid-season draft, who's gone on to state league lists. So stay tuned for that episode. But Ollie Dean's certainly one who, with his upside, is really, really going to be uh, an important ingredient for Tassie, uh, given the... Given the the height that he's got and given the I guess skill set that he's got his ability to to when he does get the ball actually actually make the right decisions he doesn't get a lot of the footy that'll probably be the next step for him getting a little bit more of the footy in his hands um they've also got Oli DePoli Cubank who's who's reasonably skinny but he's quick he's um just run a, a 2k pb in pre-season so that's that's really good for him and, and shows that he's been putting in the work over over the break and I think he finished last season really strongly as well in Tassie's finals campaign which ultimately fell a couple of steps short in prelim final week and then they've got Lenny Douglas as well who plays with Flair another one who finished really well last season um, and was a as a real staple of that Tassie lineup he only averaged the nine touches in those 14 games but he he's sort of one of those and I know it's a phrase you liked using a lot last year but he's a he's an impact per possession player he feels like he has more than nine touches if you watch him I want to talk about the two Lim boys Connor and Liam who I are both very similar players and I both like to label them as opportunistic the way yep. they play their footy they don't waste the football and they're one they're, they're two boys that love to run and gun especially with it so I think they have the capabilities to push forward this year and make a statement with their name I think it's where the versatility is with them can you put them higher up the ground put them down back so I, I'm, I'm interested to see where their football lies but they've definitely got traits in their games that do make them attractive in the way they play professional and sort of ultimate 
teammates, ultimate clubmen, uh, the things that come through with both of them. And I think you'll see that they will get midfield minutes and we'll list off a couple more from Tassie in Harry Almar, who's excellent contest defence player and he'll look to provide drive out of the back line. That'll probably be the next step for him to do it really consistently because if he's one-on-one, you'd back him. And Marty Berridan, who similar vein to Harry Almar, probably a little bit bigger and he played played reasonably in his 11 games last year but looks ready to take the next step from what we're hearing all reports are that he's had a really strong pre-season in the Apple Isle. Well, that about wraps it up. So that is episode two done. And like I said, if you haven't already, go check out our first episode if you want to hear the same about the Vic Metro boys next week. Moving on to the girls, we'll start with Vic Metro girls next week. So make sure to tune into that because a lot of talent coming through the female pathway. So please stay tuned for that. A lot of content on our socials, as we always mention. So please go check that out. We've we're built, built our content list this year. There's a lot to go out this year and a lot of fun stuff. So if you just want to see the players having a bit of fun sometimes, and please, please head over to our socials. Always appreciated. So thank you all for joining. Make sure to tune in next Wednesday to hear about the Vic Metro girls. And until then, we will see you next week.